back to the Audio Hang Show. Sitting here with the uh, funny comic, uh, Ryan Marr. Ryan, what do you got? Anything particular to plug? Uh, uh, yeah, well, actually, August, I got a lot. I'm from the Jersey Shore. I have a lot of local stuff coming up. I'm going to be at the uh, Surf Light Theater with Joey Cola cool. uh, in Long, Long Beach Island on August 16th. I'll be at Bar Anticipation. Uh, All right, in. baby. Yeah, Tom Janarone says hello. Yeah, Tom, He sure. wants you to come swing by. They do like I a million-dollar renovation. I, I love Tom, man. He's he said he, last time he saw you was Florentine's yeah, wedding. Yeah, when yeah. He was drinking Jack Daniels out of the centerpiece. He is you. something else, that guy. That guy <laughs> is something else, Yeah, Tom Janarone. So you're going to be at Bar, eh? Uh, that's Sunday, August 18th. I'll be at the Borgata, uh, Monday, August 19th through Sunday the 25th. And then something very exciting, I'll be doing the, the awards dinner I'll be hosting for the Asbury Park Comedy Fest Celebrity Golf Outing. When is that? That's going to be Monday, August 26th. So no it's a very care. busy month of August, and you can go to asburyparkcomedyfest.com for more right. info and my Twitter, at Ryan Mar Comedy. So. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about your wrestling managing career. How yeah. did that happen? I wouldn't really call it a career. It was more of a hobby. Uh, <laughs> a hobby? <laughs> you managed you get into it, Well, it, well it was one of those things when I was I was lifelong fan of professional wrestling. Yeah, but you were like 16 years old or something. Yeah, well, Iron Mike Sharp, I don't know if you guys remember him. He was like the bad guy that always got beat up on WWE. I'm not TV. a wrestling guy, but, right. you know. Well, he I, had a, a school in Brick. No one knows how or why he wound up there because he's from Canada. A school? Like a school where he taught people how to be professional wrestlers. <laughs> So, uh, hey, listen, it's a skill. Yeah. Well, I have steel rods in my spine, so I couldn't really do much of the you action. What in your spine? Oh, yeah, I have you steel were, rods you were in my spine. Like a, you were paralyzed. Yeah, for, for about, What happened? I had like a spinal disease called kyphosis. Oh, my God. Which is similar to scoliosis. And but, you, were, you were paralyzed. Yeah, after one oh, surgery, man. it went wrong. Only a couple months. Thank God it all it all worked oh, out. Only a couple months is fine. No, well, it's better. It's, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's better than, than, you know, the rest of my life. I was very fortunate. Yeah, but uh, oh, wow. so I was able to be active, but I was always nervous about doing like, you know, full blown wrestling matches. You know what I mean? So uh, sure. I was more of the bad Makes guy sense. manager that would, you know, Put the guy on the ropes. I'd choke him out, stuff like that. And I got to ha hang out and work with guys that I grew up watching. So it was how cool. old were you when you started doing this? I did it like on and off from 16 to yeah. about <laughs> 23. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you were just a. I used to have the 16 iron. 16 to 23. I used to have the iron sheet come to my house. It was. Oh, it was well, that must have been fun. Oh, fantastic! It was. It was Where fantastic. is the mustard? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I kill you. <laughs> you are like a girl, just like a Michael Jackson. We, I, we used to love playing. He used to call people effeminate like you're going to, you are effeminate just <laughs> like a Michael Jackson. The best story ever was in the late 90s, he was doing this thing. He could still actually wrestle. He still had, you know, use of, of The guy body. was a monster. Yeah, and uh, but he was getting older, so what they would do is like use him more as like a comedy match. So they'd have him come on. <laughs> and in the middle of the match, they would just hit the Macarena, and he'd start doing the Macarena <laughs> in the middle of the ring. So one of the <laughs> one of the guys. Hey, do the macarena! Ende, ende, do the macarena! One of the guys invited the sheik to his wedding, much to the chagrin of the guy's future bride. Uh -huh. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And the story that I heard, I wasn't at the wedding, is that he was out on the dance floor dancing, having fun, and a little bag fell out of his you know suit pocket mm -hmm. and onto the floor. And the kid who was next to him on the dance floor picked it up <laughs> oh, and said, "No." Said, "What? What is this?" And he looked dead in the kid's face. He goes, "That is cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that make you strong. <laughs> Give that you is <laughs> cocaine, you little creep. <laughs> and it's very expensive. <laughs> and if you're a little effeminate creep, like a Michael Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what his obsession is. Like Michael Jackson is like the <laughs> ultimate. Like he always says Michael Jackson. Yeah, like out of all. Well, the that's his way of calling a guy gay. Yeah, but out of all the guys you could pick, I guess <laughs> that was his thing, because that was the most famous guy. Like, You're gay. <laughs> Worse than Michael Jackson. Yeah, like if he said Greg Luganis, it wouldn't have the same pull. Worse yeah. than Greg Luganis. <laughs> that never, is cocaine. I never <laughs> knew that Michael Jackson was gay for sure until well, he Scott never came out. He never came no, out. He never, no, no. And Scott I got out of sure. him. I mean, he's dead he was now. With so Brooke Shields. Can. Yeah, Scott and, Thorson you know. was on the show. You know Scott Thorson. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, no, Liberace. But yeah. He was uh, sitting right there, and he explained that he had a relationship with Michael Jackson as well. Wow. Michael and Jackson! Michael never. Well, I listen, I mean, it's not surprising. My theory uh, was Michael Jackson was always depressed because, you know, he was on the road with his brothers who were all, you know, virile male, and they were getting laid on the road yeah. constantly, and he, he saw that. Mm -hmm. And I think he, you know, his father certainly was like that, too, and I don't think he knew what to do. He was, life was distorted for him, and I think he felt 
very abnormal and and yeah. and sinful because you got that going on, and then you got the mother uh, who I believe is very religious. Yeah. So you're either not a man, right. or you're you're sinning against God. Now what Christ made and now, he, he went nuts. So I feel bad for the guy. I real feel. You bad. see these people now that you know every year on the anniversary of his death they talk about how he was the greatest talent, but for 15 years before he died nobody had a nice thing to say about him. Yeah, you're right. You know, and they just bashed uh, him constantly. Yeah. And, you know, now it's like, oh, he was so talented. And granted, he was, but, you know, oh, he had such natural talent. His father beat that out of him. He did. <laughs> like, you know, he was, did. And I'll tell you what, I love, I went, I, I was, uh, I had a gig at an Indian casino not far from Gary, Indiana. Okay. Uh, years ago. And I went by the Michael Jackson, the Michael Jackson, <laughs> the house where the Jacksons grew up. Okay. Okay. For 13 brothers and sisters, a father, the mother. There were 13? I think there was about 13. Yeah, there was a lot. Maybe 11, I don't know. Jeez. But you, the house is so tiny, and you go, this is where they learned the dance moves, yeah. to love those songs. This is where they learned how to moonwalk. Like, It's so impressive. Now, is the house owned did. by the Must town, or is somebody yard. living I, there now? I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. But the guy, a driver that I had, we were close by. He goes, you know, we're about half an hour away. So I got up early. They had to leave for the airport. And I said, take me by Michael Jackson's house. Let's see where they grew up. And it's standing. And it is so tiny. Yeah. One bathroom. And you're like, oh. you, there had to be times where, like, Reby was on the dumper. And, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, guy, come on, we got rehearsal. Get yeah. out of here. Or Latoya was applying the makeup. <laughs> right. Janet. I mean, very, <laughs> very, I mean, to, 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 to learn those routines in that little home, bravo. Bravo. Well, mm. when you got your dad standing over you with a switch. Too, yeah, a I mean, switch. That'll, and that'll beating, motivate up, you. beating up the mother, cheating on the mother. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on. So what? Uh, what do you think? Like, what? What is your main goal? Do you wanna? You wanna maybe get on TV, do sitcoms? You wanna? Uh, I, I just want to keep working and I want to make working. money. I mean, yeah. whatever whatever happens happens. I mean, I I, I write. I was a train conductor from New Jersey Transit Railroad, so I actually wrote. God, a pilot. you've done it all, man. Well, yeah, that was when I realized that professional wrestling was gonna pay now? the bills. I'm uh, 30. Wow. So yeah. You've done a lot of stuff, a man. Lot of stuff yeah. in and you, you, you're years. young. You should keep going, man. Well, that I was mean, always the parallel that I felt with you because you had the whole longshoreman thing. You gave that up to do comedy. Yeah, I, listen, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you, you. I think it's important to live life a little yeah. before you do comedy because you get to comment on it. You know, and what if cracked me up was if you're I, really a funny person, you could comment. When on I was it. working on the railroad at 22 and I was making great money, I was kind of depressed because I, I never liked the job and I right. always felt like I was destined to do more and. And people would go, you know what, you're 22, you should live a little, you have this job with crappy days off. And then I quit to do comedy full time at like 26. And they're like, oh, aren't you going to grow up? Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's <laughs> no, like, but happens, right, everybody's, you know? it's, it's, the grass is always greener than these jerk offs yeah. on the other side. They don't, no, I had the same thing. But, uh, you know, you, uh, I think I, when I was 21, I made 60 grand that year. Yeah, I was long, around that too. As a longshoreman, it was a great union. But I was like, if I stay here, I'm going to fall into a lot of bad situations, you know, because yeah. there was bookies around and loan sharks around. And I owed, I, I, I got to the point where the uh, one year I made 60 grand, but the next year I fell into that thing where I was borrowing from the Shylock yep. to pay off the bookie. So I was in that awful cycle. So I would have ended up working for one of them and either be dead or in the joint right now. That still know? sounds more exciting. I had the 2 a.m. transvestites out of Trenton going to Newark. I'd rather take my <laughs> yeah, chances what? with the with the bookies. What kind but, of what kind of great you gotta have great stories from, from Yeah, being there a was always right? I mean well there were the nut job like old school railroad guys. My grandfather was a railroader, so those were always the guys that Mine I kinda too. Yeah. yeah, like I kind of liked hanging around with those guys yeah. because you know back then it was just you know let's pound shots of whiskey and well, go you know to work. What? Hold that, hold that thought. We're gonna take a break and we'll, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about what some of these stories because sometimes you go, yeah, I'm with characters. A thing that helps comedy too, though. Yeah, you're with characters and you learn how to do stuff. And you draw from them. So a lot of those, yeah, I, the character, some a couple of characters I did in sketches of Mad TV were guys I worked with at the port and truckers I would come to. Uh, but of course, I'm uniquely talented. <laughs> the only line show when we come back. No, no, man. It's a, it's, it's comfortable. It's gorgeous. Heard, I feel uh, transported. You, you like heard a, the staff, like in New the, Orleans. The employees uh, were talking yesterday that they heard uh, the Don Imus show praising our show. Apparently, yes. By that the way, you know we got to try scuttlebutt. to find that would be a, a hilarious bumper if Imus talks highly about the show. That would be a great bumper. Could you try yeah, to find we need that? Yeah, we need try to, to find that. delve into that a little <laughs> yeah. bit. I wonder what he was saying. I want to hear I'm complimenting our show. I think that would be, that's a good bumper. Maybe, he's a, maybe he watches. Maybe he listens. Or maybe and, someone just told him to say it. Who knows? Or maybe uh, he was being sarcastic and you you heard misheard. No, I it wasn't. Hear, I didn't hear I want to hear this myself. This was the scuttlebutt miss, at the French Quarters. Scuttlebutt is the word of the week. 
Right. So now, what, what did you see? Did you see anything nasty on a train throwing people out? Like, did you have to use your wrestling skill? Uh, I never <laughs> went that far, but there were some like crazy biker guys. I wonder, you know, oh, that's the worst. You can't throw a biker. No, no, out. I'm talking about guys that worked on the railroad. Oh. <laughs> like, there, I don't know what the human resources department was like at Transit, but they would hire. I'll tell you what it was like. They had a gun. They came in and said, "Hire us." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saw one guy tell a guy to get off who was drunk because he didn't have a ticket. Guy wouldn't get off, and this one conductor just drilled him in the face because he had already called the police. Wow. The police were like, "We'll meet you." Yeah, drilled him in the face, just, just punched him in the just face. Just punched him. The guy's nose exploded. So now the guy's laying on <laughs> the station platform at Rawway. The oh. cops said, "We'll be at Woodbridge. We'll get him off there." He puts the guy on the bench at Rawway. We get to Woodbridge. The cops are like, "What happened? What's, what's his blood?" Transit police. Oh, he fell. He hit his face. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, uh, I didn't see anything. You know? hey, in the middle. He fell. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It was just, and I, you know what? Mo more importantly, though, I would deal with more the commuters, the guys working on Wall Street. They were the ones. I don't know if it was like a sense of entitlement or whatever. I would see them brushing their teeth and spitting it. You know, that, on that, the seat. That, that's the word. On the seat? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. really like, <laughs> like the crackheads were just thankful for the ride. A lot of them yeah. were pretty cool. That's like that awful racist joke about cops. How many cops does it take to push a minority down a flight of steps? None, they fell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez. But Can't I, condone it! Yeah, that was the stuff that I would deal with. I, I had more problems with the commuters than I did the uh, the regular people. And then you would get, like, drunk Rangers fans coming out of the garden after oh. a loss. And uh, just... they're, they're, they're represented everywhere. Yeah. Drunk Rangers fans in the 70s and 80s, you could go to the opera, you'd hear, Beat your wife, pot fan, beat your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, but, I mean, you would deal with all different types of people, man. And it, it, was, it was, you know, I lived kind of like a sheltered... I'm from North Jersey originally, right. born in Hudson County, North Bergen, but I spent most of my life down on the Jersey Shore. So it's like sheltered life and then getting thrown into that and just being like, whoa. No, no, no that, is, that is hardcore culture shock. Can you stick around for a little while? Yeah, man, I'll Let's stick around yeah, for a thank while. thank you. Yeah, because, you know, the next guest is going to be on the phone, Mike Ferrum. At 12.05, I asked Mike to come on uh, for sure to talk more about the, the baseball situation, steroids. Uh, you a baseball fan? Yeah, here and there. Here and there. Right. Well, more of a football we'll talk, guy. But... We'll talk to Mike Farron about what's going on possibly with A-Rod. When's that going to happen? What's going to happen? And uh, Ryan will stick in for that. Nice, man. Uh, cool. So more fun, more fun, more fun. The Artie Lang Show. Come on back.